up, everybody? Welcome back to Steel City Live here on Mike Drop Sports. I'm Jason. I'm your host, and we are here with our Tuesday show. And uh, how is everybody doing? Everybody in the house, Miss Pittsburgh, Sean, Josh, Nathaniel, uh, let's see, Wesley Boyd, let's see, JD, already people in the chat, man, that's awesome, thank you guys so, so very much. As we get through the show here today, we're going to talk about maybe, a pit, well, they have reached terms with a new kick returner, we're going to talk about the NFL owners meetings where they have changed the rules of the kick return uh some may think it's for the better some may think it's for the worse some may not even care but uh they definitely have switched things up it's rather interesting so we're going to get into that kind of stuff also uh before we get going i want to extend my thoughts and prayers to the people of baltimore i know we have a rivalry uh rivalry with the city of baltimore in uh, the sports world but uh man that sucks what's going on down in the city of baltimore a cargo bridge hitting the francis scott key bridge and uh collapsing six people reported still missing from that and uh man that is a terrible thing uh wow just uh really just crazy events and it just shows you how fast the world can change how fast your life can change really quickly in the blink of an eye from an accident and it's just uh pretty nuts man uh the search for six missing construction workers still continues in that uh just anybody else injured anybody that loses their life and it just everybody that uh involved just uh their thoughts and prayers from us and well wishes hopefully that all gets sorted out soon but man what a tragic thing uh, definitely. Uh, what's up, George? What's up, Rod? Uh, yeah, prayers for Baltimore, no doubt. What's up, CL? When are we going to start playing flag football in the NFL? Pretty soon, pretty soon, CL. Uh, yes, yes, George, I agree. Yeah, soon. Joshua Shields up uh, praying for the victims and their family. Absolutely. Your average comic book nerd in the house. So uh, everybody make sure you absolutely dominate that subscribe button. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, it's really awesome to see all the likes already starting to come in. Already up over double digits there. Hitting into 14. Going toward 20. So let's crank that like button up again. The prayers for the Baltimore people, man. Uh, I know we all have a tight rivalry and talk a lot of crap on Baltimore. But man, you don't want to see any of that crap uh anything uh happen like that man uh sports is just garbage when it comes to that kind of stuff pray for them people uh let's start with uh the pittsburgh steelers uh possibly well they didn't possibly i keep saying that for some reason because it was like a rumor there at the beginning but uh the pittsburgh steelers saw signing uh cordell uh, Cordrell Patterson, uh, the kicker turner, and this is coming in the wake of the NFL changing the kickoff return and the kickoff rules in general. Uh, so we're going to go through that rule change and break that down a little bit and just try to kind of see where you all are thinking this uh, this will lead, if it makes the plays more exciting and uh, whatnot. Uh, forgive me again, I was like sitting on the couch like dozing off, I'm like, man, See, this is where that 15, 20 minutes before your show and you're trying to just chill for a second, it gets you. It bites you in the ass sometimes, guys. <laughs> but anyway, we are here and we will get moving. Uh, but this this rule change passed 29-3 to 3, amongst a couple other rules uh, regarding replay. Um, those things aren't too big of a deal, uh, but we'll go over them a lot also. So basically what this kickoff rule is going to be, guys, uh, as we move through. Everybody, uh, let me know what you think. Thank you, Nathaniel. I appreciate it. Justin, what's up, man? What's up, Claude? Uh, how are you, buddy? CL, uh, so we definitely go in uh, centered around one? I think so. I hope so. We'll see. Center or right tackle? You got to do it. Uh, but let's see here with this kickoff rule. I want you guys to tell me exactly what your thoughts are on it. So this is what's called um, a NFL hybrid type kickoff uh, is what it is. You've solved it. You've seen this in the NFL or XFL if you've watched that ever. Uh, you've seen this, uh, and I think they've adopted it for this new league they have going on too that I haven't really got into. Uh, but uh, so you're starting out 
everybody's got to have a foot. You're going to have to have at least nine members of the receiving team have a foot on the 35-yard line. So they'll basically be in a straight-line formation along with the kickoff team being on the opponents, I believe, 40 or your 45. i got to double-check that. Hold on. we got to double-check that because I don't want to give you the wrong rules here. Uh, yeah, they're 40. So... The kick, the receiving team is going to be on the 35. Your foot's going to be on the 35 with nine players. The receipt or the kickoff team is going to be lined up on the 40 with five players on each side of the kicker. You're going to be allowed two total return men. So the kicker will be lined up where he normally does at the 35, I believe. Yes, 35 yard line. And then you kick that ball off. You are not allowed to move as a kickoff team person, a coverage person. Uh, coverage player you're not allowed to move nor is the receiving team until somebody touches the ball once the ball is touched or it hits the ground then they are allowed to move then the play resumes as normal however to limit collisions to limit injuries that's where they're having these these uh, kickoff and receiving teams start at the 35 and 40 respectively and then that allows for less of a collision, but you are tr the attempt is to bring the excitement back of the play, to rejuvenate the play of the kickoff, because now you should get more returns. Over 1,000 uh, 1, touchbacks last year, one, a lot of them, like 1,056 touchbacks or something of that nature last year, and uh, now they're trying to rejuvenate it with this lineup, with this setup. Also, there I don't think there's any penalty for going out of bounds now. Uh, that kind of stuff. So let me know what you guys think about this. We'll break it down a little bit more if you guys want to, but, uh, I think it might add excitement. I'm not sure how I really feel about it yet. I'm going to have to see it in the NFL. Yes, we've seen it in the XFL, but is it something, uh, I didn't watch the NFL a ton, you know, it just wasn't something that I've been like super pumped about. It's just not my thing. Uh, but let's read some of your comments. Yes, they have taken a lot of XL rules. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Patterson may be 33, but he is still a physical freak, still fast. Absolutely. I agree, man. He's going to be pretty good. So the Steelers signed him. Uh, it was a rumor, and I kept saying it, but they are going to sign him to a two-year, $6 million deal, uh, bringing that uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers have an excellent return man, an all-pro return guy now. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so let's get back through here. Not a bad. I appreciate it. Long time news. Let's see, oh, okay. Just eliminate the kickoff and start at the 25 or 30 yard line. Most kicks are touchbacks anyway. I think that we're going to not see as many touchbacks. I would probably say that you're going to see a lot more returns because the I think the kicking team's now going to think to themselves the touchback. You get the ball now at the 30 if you get a touchback. I think they're going to try to put the ball in play with the kickoff team being now at the 40. Uh, being there quickly to be able to uh, cover the kick, I think that that is going to add a little bit of a layer now to where the kickoff team is going to want to put the ball in play, make a return happen because I think they can pin the def or the offense, the receiving team down deeper inside of their own end. Uh, let me put my phone on Do Not Disturb here real quick, guys. Got to do that. Got to do that because we might get a phone call and shit gets disastrous. Uh, Joshua Shields, Claude Bishop, pretty much the owners as well, but can we do, yeah, the owners will kibosh anything and change anything they want. They voted on this and it passed 29 to three. No fair catches allowed. Uh, th what's up, Robert? Uh, there's no fair catches allowed. So there will be a ton of returns. Yeah, no fair catches. That's another dynamic guys. Uh, Claude Bishop, absolutely nothing at this point. Uh, Beer Malls, what's up? If you decide to do an onside kick, you must first tell the refs and then line up goes back to normal. Yep, absolutely. Uh, it's going to be different. We're going to have to see. Nathaniel Sampson, how much cap space do the Steelers have now? They can't have too much. About 15 million, 13, 15 million in between there right now. It's going to depend. Oh, well, with this signing, it's going to take about 3 million off the books for this year. You're looking at the, now, though, the Pittsburgh Steelers probably going to have to start doing some of them restructures here. So we're going to look into that, too. Uh, just a minute, Key. Uh, so when they kick it off, will the kicking team start running toward the receiving team? No, it's going to be you have to wait till they touch the ball. Once the ball is touched or hits the ground, then it is in play. Uh, beer mall. So more trick play like, uh, hey, I'm going to do a surprise on kick in this uh, onside kick in the second quarter. 
Uh, I don't know. You got to warn them. You got to tell the refs that you're going to do the onside kick. Uh, Nathaniel Sampson. Yeah, you can't have no more surprises, though, I guess. Yeah, because you can't do it in this formation. We're going to have to see how this all plays out with it and just kind of learn. Uh, Nathaniel Sampson, beer malls, I've never heard of that. Uh, Nathaniel Sampson, crazy rule. JD, they also have a landing zone. The ball has to land between the 20 and goal line or the receiving team gets it at the 40. Yeah, that's what I was just looking at right here, JD. Uh, there's like a chart they got up on the, the internet here that I was looking at. So it's like kickoff start line, setup zone is what they call where the receiving is going to be. And then what JD just said, the landing zone. So 25 yards from the spot of the kick. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It's definitely different. They are right. Exactly. They won't. Ball must be caught before you can run. Yes. JD, thanks for that. I never knew. Football legend high and back. What's up, football legend? CL. Are they going to restructure camp? They're going to have to restructure several. I'm not sure who they're going to restructure, but he would be an excellent candidate considering he is one of the top two or three uh, contracts on uh, the Steelers right now. Steelers current contracts. Let's see. I didn't bring this up and I meant to. Let's get this up. Also, guys, while I'm doing that and while we're talking here, make sure you're hitting that like button as we move through the show here on Steel City Live. I'm Jason. This is the show. And uh, we do this pretty much every day, uh, except for Wednesdays where it's 730 instead of 630. But we definitely do uh, a live show every day. So let's uh, get into this contract stuff here, guys. Active contracts right now, they have $234.2 million. Top 51 contracts totaling $242 million. Dead cap of $24 million. Uh, 2023 rollover, $2.3. Uh, total all liabilities right now in their top 51 pool is uh, $267 million. Just to give you a little bit of numbers, what they have right now, you know they did update the cap into increase it so take all these numbers into consideration tj watt minka fitzpatrick alex highsmith and cameron hayward as their top contracts right now the top four you have patrick queen that was just recently signed enters that top five of the top contracts larry ogan joby is uh on there uh, earning an average of uh, $9.5 million. You have James Daniels, Isaac Siamalu, Chris Boswell. So really, they could really look at some of these monster contracts that they have, uh, like TJ Watt's four-year $112 million deal worth $28 million annually. annually. And uh, Minka Fitzpatrick still on his four-year $73 million deal. Alex Highsmith on his four-year $68 million deal. And Cameron Hayward reaching the end of his four-year $65 million deal worth $16.4 million. So um, that's how this is rolling here, guys. So the Pittsburgh Steelers probably are now roughly about $10 million uh, estimated cap space, a little over $10 million with the signing of Cordell Ropat or Qu Quadrell Patterson. I can never say that guy's name. Also, guys, while we're rolling here, uh, my chat just rolled up. So if I forgot your uh, comment, please forgive me, guys. What's up, Steeler Wade? What's up, Carlos? Patterson is an ideal signing veteran, well-respected and good locker room, dude. That's cool, man. I'm glad. All right, Steeler Wade, Robert Rowe, Daniels should get an extension to free up some space. James Daniels, he is on the, uh, what, three-year, $26 million. That could probably happen, actually, yes. Uh, you're probably right about that. Boswell on a four-year, $20 million deal. Um, yeah. Cole Holcomb might come off of there, guys, depending on how that works out. Uh, Nate Herbig's due four million. You might be able to restructure that. So they are definitely going to be able to re. They have some available restructures. Is basically the point that I wanted to make. So right now, Spots Tracks has them right now about fourteen million dollars, and I'm not sure if they have the Patterson deal in there right now, which will roughly take off about three, three and a half probably in cap space, uh, depending on how the deal structured. It's two years, six million total so depending on if it's more front end loaded or more back end loaded we'll see how much cap space rolls off for the 2024 season but you're going to end up 
probably needing to restructure. You figure if you restructure TJ Watt, which is probably something that will happen, uh, you could probably get yourself, you know, $10 million or so there. Minka, you could probably do also get yourself another, you know, six, seven million dollars maybe. Uh, Alex Highsmith, you could probably restructure his $17 million annual salary and probably get him down to about a $7 million cap hit, maybe. It just depends on what your long-term plans are. Cameron Hayward, you probably could restructure him if you add a year and get him down, you know, save yourself 4 or $5 million. It depends on how you want to handle Cam's situation considering his age, his injury history last year, and what their plans are moving forward uh, with Cameron Hayward at the defensive tackle position. Uh, you have Larry Ogunjobi, like I said, earning 9.5. They may be able to cut him altogether. Uh, they just got Dean Lowry. So Dean Lowry might make that uh, an available option for Larry Ogunjobi along that defensive front to be let go. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, but you've, the Steelers play that 3-4 mix. So defensive ends, you know, are pivotal in that defensive front. They're right there. That's part of the defensive line, you know. Uh, they're right in the middle, basically. Uh, so here we go, guys. You need depth there. And is Larry Ogunjobi expendable, you know? Love Cam, but not as $16 million. Yeah, $16.4 million. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't say that I'd be down for Cam for 16.4 next year. Yeah, football legend Pickens plays. Uh, Claude, I agree. Beer Malls, I'm happy for Boz. He deserves it. Yeah, he got a decent deal. CL, not nearly $10 because they got to sign draft picks. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what you, you're going toward the draft, CL. Like you were saying there, you got to sign draft picks. So you're going to need at least, what, $10, 12000000 million there just to sign your draft picks. So you're looking at nothing basically left until you do some restructures now uh so they can make space available that's the whole point of it all what's up roberta i sure miss you talking about the uh falcon running back Steelers side today uh yeah he yeah he's gonna be pretty decent i think uh i think he could be a quality return guy especially with the rule changes i think he's gonna be able to provide some uh quality leadership he's been in the league for a little bit an all pro guy at the return position uh we'll see how this goes Football legend, the New England Patriots are screwed because um, uh, Kashawn Bout got arrested for gambling. Oh, that sucks for the Patriots. <laughs> Just play it. Yeah, man, I don't know what these dudes think sometimes, bro. I don't. It's like, man, you're making millions of dollars. You're good. If you want to go gamble, go play craps or something. Go play some poker at the at the casino. I don't know. Don't bet on football. We need a better nose tackle like Big Snack. Yeah, Casey Hampton was one of a kind. Uh, Dean Lowry's a pretty big dude. He's going to be playing along that defensive front. He's, what, 6'6", 296, you know? They're adding some pounds there. I don't know. It just depends on what kind of style of football you're wanting to play, man. <laughs> you know? Big Snack was a rarity, definitely. He was one of the guys that uh, was just something different, man. Big dude, fast, low to the ground, really could get some good leverage. Uh, just a one-of-a-kind type guy, man, in my book. I, I really enjoyed watching him play. <laughs> All right, guys, let's see. Four teams need for Steelers following first wave of free agency. Uh, okay. Also, guys, did you see that um, the trade deadline has been extended a week? And that was due to a thing that was brought up by the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, trying to extend that. So it now is uh, extended a week further. You're also going to be able to put two players on injury reserve after that. And uh, you're also going to be able to um, bring in quarterbacks as many times as you want to for an emergency, uh, bona fide quarterbacks off the practice squad. You're going to be able to do some other things in terms of bringing some players back, uh, playoff time. So definitely some rule changes out there. Nothing too, too crazy except for the uh, uh, kickoff. See, Steelers, what's up? Uh, no, today, yeah, we're Tuesday. Today's the second one of this week. We did a couple uh, late week last one, too. We did one, like, Saturday and stuff. I think, no, Sunday we didn't. We just did a regular show. Uh, Nathaniel Sampson, no, uh, to get off the top, not to get off the topic, but if I am a, uh, not a Steelers fan, are you able to tell me who Merrill Hodges is? Yeah, Merrill Hodges is a guy that played for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Chicago Bears. Uh, his career cut short by a concussion, a guy that's led... Uh, 
a interesting life, man. Uh, definitely uh, has had an interesting life in terms of things that have happened to him. Guy survived open heart surgery. A guy that, uh, you know, uh, has wrote two books. A guy that has uh, beat cancer, went through chemotherapy. A guy uh, that's wrote a book called Find a Way that has definitely always found a way. A Pittsburgh Steeler guy that played for Chuck Knoll. I believe he played a little bit for Bill Cowher, too, also. Uh, but he is a former Pittsburgh Steeler, for former Chicago Bear, uh, former analyst for over 20 years for ESPN, uh, a guy that uh, definitely has done a lot inside of the NFL, inside of the football circle, and, uh, and is a general, in general, good human being, uh, at least from you know what I know, and uh, a guy that has really uh, fought his way through life and uh, is here today still talking about it, and uh, he's going to come on here and talk a little bit about it with you. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll get a lot of draft insight from him. Sean Big Snack, Sam Mason, what's up? Do the Steelers need one more wide out on free agency? I think they can take care of it in the draft. Honestly, I really do. I, I, I don't care if they would get one. It does not matter to me, per se, if they go out. I think it really makes no huge difference going out there. If they're able to get somebody in an affordable rate, so be it. But if not, go out in the draft, find yourself a young guy, and just roll with it if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think spending a tremendous amount of high-value draft capital is not the way to go here. Uh, I don't think a trade would be you know be effective for a wide receiver if you want to trade for somebody go out and get a center I guess uh but I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be able to handle that also so maybe look for that center from Miami um what's his name Connor something Connor Williams I believe uh yeah I had him in the uh show the other day I talked about him yeah Connor Williams uh, he tore his ACL in December, a guy that was pretty damn good uh, for the Miami Dolphins. And we're going to have to see how his medicals come back. So, guys, the Pittsburgh Steelers could bring him in and let him go through some medical testing and allow their team doctors to determine how his rehab is going, how far out he is from being available. Um, and maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers sign him on a one-year deal or something of that nature, and then hopefully get their guy in the draft and really tell him, hey, man, we're going to give you this shot to be the veteran center this year. This will be your year to be uh, a prove-it type deal for anybody in the league. We're going to bring in our young guy. Hopefully they'll be ready sooner rather than later and uh, you can kind of mold them in for the 2025 season for us and uh, if anything goes bad, maybe we'll extend you a decent deal. Maybe that's how the Pittsburgh Steelers handle that situation. Uh, every time I catch a live show, the snow rolls in springtime in the Rockies. Wow, man, you guys get too much snow, man. Beer miles, I'm back, Jack. <laughs> Uh, see Steelers, if Marvin Harrison Jr. goes to pick 20, do the Steelers pick him or something? If Marvin Harrison is at pick 20, I run to the podium and take him. I really do. <laughs> I mean, he's an elite talent, man. Uh, any type of elite talent that's sitting there at 20, uh, that's the best player on the board, I think you go and take him, man, regardless of your team needs. Uh, Roberta Campbell, I don't like the hip drop, ta or hip drop rule either. Yeah, I'm not a fan. They did change that, too. Football legend, the Pittsburgh Steelers should trade some players for a decent uh, wide receiver. I don't think so, man. I uh, see Steelers, you play Madden and rebuild a team. Uh, my kids play Madden. I don't play Madden. I used to play it a lot. Uh, Nathaniel Sampson, thanks so much. No problem, man. Love a good $5 minimum bet blackjack table. Sit long enough and you get results every now and then. Yeah, man, I'd rather do that than bet on sports anyway. I'd rather play some games. Uh, I like betting on sports, but it's not that fun. I, it's not like something I have to do. I don't know why the NFL guys do. Roberta Campbell, uh, that was uh, when ESPN was actually good source. Yes, when Merrill worked for them uh, before they did all these big layoffs and cuts, uh, they, it was definitely a much better product. Uh, JD, maybe Lowry was um, to let Cam know that he can be replaced. It doesn't uh, doesn't want to restructure and he can be a solid player. Yeah, Lowry can fill in down in there, guys. You got to remember what kind of defense the Pittsburgh Steelers one run is that 3-4. A guy like Casey Hampton fit well because he was big and solid, low to the ground, but yet he was still quick and versatile. Uh, so when you're running that 3-4 style defense, you need some versatile, quick players around that defensive front. Yes, you need some size, but they 
got to be able to move too, and uh, they got to be able to rush the passer. They got to be able to cause a disruption in the run game. So defensive ends, defensive tackles in a three-four scheme are imperative, man. They are definitely imperative, and they have to do the job, you know, effectively. And the second that you get old and lose a step, it really hurts you inside of that three-four defense, you know. But like I said, they play a lot of sub packages and shit too. Craig Werlow, uh, like when uh, Hodge uh, and Jaws did the NFL matchup. Yeah, that was a good show, man. Uh, Robert Road, Hodge ran for 120 yards and 60 yards receiving in a playoff game for the Steelers at Denver back in 1989. That's a cool statistic. I didn't know that. Uh, beer malls. Uh, I lost my winnings buying a beer and tipping the cut. Me too, dude. I always do that. Uh, Roberta Campbell, the Steelers have and had good success for some time now finding wide receivers in the draft, so I don't worry about the wide receivers either. Yeah, hopefully they continue that, man. Uh, Joshua Shields, we'll see. Yeah, no doubt, football legend. The New England Patriots should trade Miles Bryant for a good, decent corner. Uh, they need a lot of New England, I would say, but I, I think so. I don't, I've not broken their team down, but just from the outsider's view, it seems like they need a lot. Now, without Belichick, uh, I think they're going to be in a rebuild phase here. Uh, I think you guys hired a decent coach in um, Gerard Mayo. I think he's going to be a good one. We'll see how that plays out for you guys, though. Uh, Beer Malls, TJ Black, is Calvin Austin about to be replaced and cut? Now, Calvin Austin's going to be in the plans. They're not going to get rid of Calvin Austin. Uh, he's approaching, what, his third year of his rookie deal. Uh, they're going to ride that out. Uh, he has potential, and he could still do some things, and I think he still has a chance to be good. Uh, Robert Road, was that the game Brister was on fire? Oh, Mark was asking Robert that. I don't know, man. You have to ask Robert. Robert knows a lot of stats. Uh, big stretch, 357. I like the uh, Cordrell signing. Uh, I think not only for special teams, but to help Jalen and Najee with blocking. Uh, I think he could, dude, he's quick. He, he's a good guy, uh, good in shape guy, a good in shape type player, a guy that takes care of himself, a guy that uh, is quick and shifty. Uh, it never hurts to have a guy like that that you can throw in there uh, and just have a change of pace and, you know, throw him a pass out of the backfield, give him the ball every once in a while, you know, um, do some gimmicky type things with him if you have to. But he definitely could add some real value. Definitely big stretch. Uh, Nathaniel Sampson, have you had any other former Steelers on the channel? No, nope, he's it, man. Um, I've not really had many guests. Sean's about it, man. Uh, see, Steelers, can you show me as many teams as you can think of that uh, Matt Jones will be a starter on? No, I have no clue. Uh, Robert Road, yes, it was Mark Malone. Stock dropped the pass uh, on a fourth down play, or the Steelers may have won. We lost 24-23. Wow, man. I think that's something. Uh, football legend, Russell Wilson is um, way too old to be playing, and I have a feeling he is not going to be a good quarterback uh, on the Steelers. They should have kept uh, Pickett instead of trading for Russell Wilson. Well, they didn't trade for Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson was uh, put basically put into the free agency market while the Denver Broncos are liable for $38 million of his contract. Russell Wilson is in excellent shape. He had a pretty darn good year last year, statistically. Uh, Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos uh, not being kind of on board with him kind of gave him a bad name. Other ways, he got a bad name, too. But that, uh, Russell Wilson, statistically and play-wise, did not have a bad season. And he was one touchdown behind the NFL offensive MVP and Lamar Jackson. Also, Russell Wilson is only 35 years old, and that is not super old in the NFL right now. So I think Russell Wilson still has a good chance of being decent for the Pittsburgh Steelers. However, being on a one-year, $1.2 million deal with the Steelers, uh, what do you have to lose? Uh, nothing. So I think it's probably a win-win for the Steelers no matter what happens. Not Ed Reed, Sean Jeff Reed. <laughs> Ed Reed endorsed. Yeah, I did have Ed Reed or uh, Jeff Reed come on. Yeah, uh, one of my son's friends got him on. Uh, he did get on a short. So if you ever want to check out a short from a Tucson Super Bowl champion, telling you everybody to go watch Mike Drop Sports and subscribe to Mike Drop Sports. Uh, Jeff Reed, two time Super Bowl champion for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, yeah, he came on and uh, did a short for us. 
Uh, Robert Road, we did that one. Sean did that one. Craig Werlow, you notice, uh, didn't take them long to sign him, only after a few hours after NFL saying, yeah, exactly. Uh, Omar Khan's on it, guys. Let's face the facts. I know people uh, maybe have mixed feelings about Omar. Some people say he's, you know, not as good as we all think. The majority think we think he's pretty decent, but I've heard rumblings of people saying, you know, he brings a lot of these one-year rentals and things like that. Uh, I don't. I think he has a good mix, man. And like I've said often, I feel like he's given options to the Pittsburgh Steelers that they haven't had in recent past. I think that Kevin Colbert did a good job under old sets of rules and regulations in the old style of the NFL. Well, not old, but older style of the NFL now that we're into the newer generation. I feel like Omar Khan has done an excellent job so far. I definitely do. Uh, all right, I'm going to get to some more of the comments. I'm going to get a drink, but first... I want everybody to hit the hell out of the like button for your boy here uh, and make sure that you are subscribed to Mike Drop Sports and uh, always coming back to the show here, Steel City Live, man. We're going to keep going and cranking it along. We're going to stay in this format for a little while longer until we hit that 5,000 subscriber mark. Then we're probably going to switch into a different format, the widescreen format, and uh, probably do the show just a little bit different. Um, but until then, we're going to roll in this uh, short feed type uh, view, this vertical view. So so make sure you hit that like button for us. I'm going to get a drink. All right. Now we are rocking. Uh, see Steelers, can you name um, me as any me? Uh, no, I'm not doing that one, buddy. Uh, nice. Uh, beer miles. Nice. Despite being a Raven. I, I have loved Ed Reed. Great player. But yeah, he was a great player. Yeah, Sean. Yeah, I know what you meant, buddy. Ed Reed's on the tip of the tongue because Ed Reed's a beast, bro. Uh, Mr. Wyman, isn't Dak Prescott in trouble? Because I heard a, uh, from Total Pro Sports, there's a possibility we get him. I didn't hear that. Whoever Total Pro Sports is, I have no clue who that is. Uh, let me see, buddy. Let me look. I will look it up. Guys, I will look up anything. We, we will definitely explore all options. No contract, Dak, Pro, Dak Prescott, Dallas Cowboys agree. Um, so basically, probably what's going on with Dak is they want to, uh, Dak maybe wants an extension and they're not willing to do it. What's he proven? He ain't won no playoff games or nothing, you know? Uh, beer malls. Oh man, I'm not going to get uh, called out for liking Ed Reed. I'm a Steelers fan. You're all right. I think Ed Reed's a you know, beast. He's a Hall of Famer, man. Uh, great competition, man. I love all ultimate competitors like him. Uh, Mr. Y, man. No, I mean, I was just going in uh, free agency. Not that we're getting. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I think that's exactly now. Uh, after, uh, I read your comment and read what's going on here with the Cowboys. Dak just hasn't proven anything, guys. Uh, if you guys don't like, then you guys aren't true fans. Uh, what are you talking about? Ed? Ed Reed and Troy P. Uh, days was so much fun. Absolutely epic battles, guys. Epic battles of true legends. Uh, I miss those days. And hopefully now with Patrick Queen coming over, we have TJ Watt. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the, the Ravens rivalry really heats up again this year. Really gets back to them them uh, slobber knocker type games, man. Those knockout type games, you know? Those like crazy just intense down to the wire they are now but they're still it just feels like there's something missing i want that intensity back i i don't know how to put my finger on it uh football legend ernie davis uh was so good back in the gold days the steelers should have traded for him ernie davis i don't know who that is football legend i'll have to look it up uh robert road damn they only uh allow hitting the like button once <laughs> no, thanks dude i wish they would allow you to hit it a hundred times uh, beer malls exactly epic expedition those ugh, epic expedition those were the days of defense defensive days see Steelers when I was at Universal I met a Steelers fan that's cool see they're everywhere bro everywhere there's a Steeler bar in every town it feels like man everywhere I go on vacation ever there's a Steeler bar somewhere man and uh, that's cool for me uh, Craig Warlow Ed Reed was their uh, Troy absolutely Ed Reed was just different. Just different. Charles B., hello from Atlanta. Running back Patterson should fit well with the Steelers. Charles B., what's your thought on uh, Patterson and his return abilities? I know now that they changed the rules. Uh, what do you guys like about him down there? Uh, what didn't you like about him? If you could throw a quick comment in and let us know. You're a fan of the team. You've probably seen him a lot. So um, that should be cool to get your insights. So throw it up there if you can. 
uh, football legend. I went to Universal a couple months ago. That's cool, man. Oh, uh, that sucks. Man, prayers for him. Uh, Claude Bishop beat uh, them seven out of the last eight times. Is not much of a rivalry. It's still intense, though. You know, Claude, it's still rivalry in my book. Uh, the Ravens do way better right lately in the regular season. Uh, so the Steelers getting them in the regular season and winning and the Ravens going a little bit farther and the Steelers in the playoffs. Yes, Lamar sucks, so he can't win playoff games. It's still, though, that back and forth. You know, I feel like it's still good rivalry. I feel like the Bengals are probably a little bit more of a rival now because I feel like we're splitting games with them. Uh, the be the Browns have become a decent rivalry again uh, since they've gotten better. Uh, I'm glad the Steelers, though, are on the winning side of those rivalries. It's pretty cool. And they went 5-1 and one in the division last year, which was really neat, too. Oh, Ernie Davis died of cancer. That sucks, man. Well, prayers to him and his family. Go Ravens. That's a notorious Ravens fan. All right, man. Hey, prayers to you guys down in Baltimore. That sucks, man. Uh, all football stuff aside, sports stuff aside, uh, I hope you guys uh, uh, really find some way to heal. And that, that does suck what happened down there. Samantha, can you tell me? No, I won't. Uh, Mr. Y, man, no go Ravens. Uh, big stretch, 357. Uh, he was a running back um, from Syracuse. Uh, oh, now I know who you're talking about. When with the Browns. Okay, wasn't there a movie about him and uh, somebody else too? Yeah, I know who you're talking about now. John Brown, yes, I know who you're talking about now. Okay, I get it. It clicked. John Creech, uh, what do you think about the Steelers starting uh, Russ over Justin, uh, but Colts Nation, uh, Colts fan in the house, what's up, John, we welcome everybody, guys, um, I feel like Russell Wilson should be the starter, and the reason why is Justin Fields has to have that year to catch his breath, guys, I keep saying that, uh, because I feel like it's needed for him, I feel like he needs to figure out a way to become a pro quarterback, because as of right now, he's not. Uh, he needs to really figure out some of his deficiencies. And I think a year, taking his time, he might be in by week nine. Russell might get injured. Just some time to really learn from a guy that's been to the mountaintop in the NFL, a guy that has been to the Super Bowl, a guy that has done it at a high level for a very long time. Learn from him. Take that advantage of being around a guy like Russell Wilson. And I think it could mean, I mean big things for Justin. Uh, he has really a, a real lack of anticipation. His pocket presence isn't very good. He needs to learn how to stay in the pocket a little bit. He does run the football really well. I think he needs to learn to read defenses a little bit better. I think just those types of things are, will, will, will help him if he works on those things a little bit. X Slayer just tuned in. You may have already talked about it, but do you think uh, we have a Super Bowl potential with Wilson and Fields at our quarterback position? I, I, I wouldn't call Super Bowl because I, I just don't know. It's way too early. We got to see how this team has uh, comes together. That's the major factor, guys. We can load this team up with a gazillion monster athletes, the best athletes around. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can have the a super team in terms of that. But if the team doesn't come together and you're not seeing them gel and you're not seeing that kind of thing going, that dynamic means the most. And until you start to see this team perform together, it's so hard to ever tell if that could be the case. Do I think they could have playoff success? Absolutely. And I think Russell Wilson could really have a big year. I look for Russell Wilson to possibly be um, in the tops of, you know, the talks of like the top five, six, seven quarterbacks in the NFL this year statistically. Uh, I just think he could be set up for that in Pittsburgh with Arthur Smith's offense, uh, getting the opportunity from the Steelers, having a good defense behind him. Uh, I definitely think he could do big things because that's when Russ has been at his best in his uh, professional days is with a good defense, with a coach like uh, Arthur Smith that calls offense in that way. That's how he shined before. So we'll see how this goes. All right, guys, don't forget to hit the like button as we move through the Tuesday show here on Steel City Live. I'm Jason, and this is Mike Drub Sports. I appreciate you all so much. Very Rare says, I feel like getting Patterson could be uh, insanely OP with the new kick rule. Yeah, I think it could be cool, man. I definitely think he can make a big difference. Uh, football legend Robert Kraft is an absolute idiot for getting rid of Mac Jones. Mac Jones sucked, dude. He couldn't throw the ball. 
He got the weak arm, bro. You should be happy about that one, football legends. You should be happy about Mac Jones going to the Jaguars to be a backup because that's all he'll ever be in the league is a backup. Uh, Claude Bishop, the Steelers are, uh, are every team in the division's biggest rival. Yeah, because they are the Steelers, you know? The Steelers are the Steelers. We should be proud of that. I, I really think so. I think that that's something we should hang our hat on. Everybody wants to beat the Steelers. And when you come to play the Steelers, it's like your Super Bowl every week, honestly. And people can say, oh, they haven't been that relevant since 2016, not winning a playoff game. It's still the Steelers. The legend remains of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They still have six Lombardi trophies sitting down on Southwater Street. They are no slouch. And when a team comes in, they measure themselves off of beating the Pittsburgh Steelers like hey man we beat the Steelers it makes you relevant and no matter what the Steelers are doing it makes you relevant and I'll stand on that heel oh man guys I'm getting a cold I am like so plugged up beer malls uh yeah very rare it's perfect time to get Peterson yeah I agree Deion Sanders would love this kick return oh boy wouldn't he ever dude he would destroy he, he dude, D, Neon Dion was the shit returning to football, man. Uh, kickoffs was his shit. Punts, he was nice. Uh, Craig Worlow, I am old enough to remember when uh, Turkey Jones uh, planted Bradshaw head first uh, into the ground. Oh, man. Damn, dude. Uh, I was, I don't know if I've ever seen that play or, you know, a replay of it. I'm not old enough to remember it. Azu, Azula uh, says, I agree. Azula Collins, uh, football legend Robert Kraft is an idiot uh, for getting rid of Bill Belichick. Come on, bro. Bill Belichick's just getting old, man. Beer malls. I think it's going to be exciting for returns. I just don't like the onside kick factor. Granted, the other team usually knows you're going for an onside kick in the fourth quarter. The surprise element is gone. Yeah, the surprise element is gone. But I do think this will rejuvenate the play, hopefully. And hopefully we'll have a lot, maybe some turnovers off of it. You know, maybe some kick returns off of it for touchdowns. Bring that element in. Uh, it's been a long time since I remember seeing a, a Steelers kickoff return or something like that for a touchdown punt return we've had you know in the recent past uh but you know hey it should make it exciting okay don't clog the chat up with that football legend make it in one big uh big comment azula collins all we need to do is uh be in the same page yeah you got to be all on the same page that's it that's exactly what i'm talking about azula Getting yourself into a cohesive unit, man. That is the biggest key in professional sports. You have so many different personalities. So many people are so many players that are just out for themselves sometimes. You have to get a unit that is all about the team, all about playing ball, playing for one another, man. And that is the most pivotal part to this stuff. I heard a very good interview today uh, from Ike Taylor on... Um, all Things Covered podcast uh, with McFadden and Peterson, uh, Patrick Peterson. And uh, I was listening to that podcast and hearing Ike talk about the 05 Steelers, talking about the difference from the 05 defense to the 08 defense, talking about the difference in the teams and what they had and how they came together. And, and it's really just interesting to hear about how they build that dynamic in the locker room and how it comes together and how, how rare it actually is to have a team really come together to make that type of run, you know? Uh, do you think uh, it was reasonable to trade Kenny Pickett? And also, what do you think about the, the Colts roster? I think the Colts got a good quarterback. I think he'll end up being good. We'll see. And you got Joe Flacco, Flacco as a backup, and he definitely proved that he can still get it done. Uh, but I think the Colts are definitely having a good roster. They beat the Steelers last year uh, with Mitchell Trubisky at the helm. I don't know if uh, maybe they had a different quarterback in play. Maybe that becomes a different um uh, different game but Pittman's good uh they extended him now to a new deal uh, I definitely think the Colts are on the rise man uh, I definitely do and I think they're going to be a team that is definitely a contender uh I think Kenny Pickett trade was a good one getting picked 98 for Kenny Pickett uh who is statistically horrible uh historically horrible I'm down for it let him go somewhere else and try plus he's not a, a go-getter uh, you got to fight for your job man Turkey Jones almost ended uh, the Bradshaw's career. I remember that game. That was crazy to watch the way Bradshaw. Wow, man. I want to see that just to see what you guys are talking about. 
uh, Mac Jones was not at all liked by his own players. I don't like Mac Jones. I just don't think he was a, a top the top shelf quarterback in the NFL. JD was uh, drafted as wide receiver, or JD he was drafted as wide receiver, and Smith made him a running back in Atlanta, so he can play wide receiver plus kick returner, maybe a slot guy. Hey guys, yeah. Get him out there. I am never opposed to putting the running back out in the slot as opposed to bringing in, you know, an extra receiver. You can always motion that running back out to play the slot role. You know, keeping the defenses honest. You know, start out with your, uh, you know, pistol formation, single side car to the right or left. Put that running back in motion. Let them set up in the slot and allow them to get a mismatch uh, on like a linebacker, you know, or maybe a defensive end has to pull back and cover that uh, running back out of the slot role. You know, that happens, man. And that's where you create those mismatches. Formational uh, movement, man. And I think the Pittsburgh Steelers under Arthur Smith have to really be dedicated to that movement this year and really create those mismatches. Get your best player on their weakest player. That is the name of this game, man. Uh, Bill Belichick, yeah, he sucks. <laughs> no, I'm just playing, man. I'm just messing with you, football legend. George Teston, oh, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, Trent Brown uh, need a plus size jersey. Trent Brown was big, wasn't he? Uh, Robert Road, uh, Bradshaw missed the next six games after the Jones cheap shot. Bradshaw, man, hey, best Steelers quarterback, four rings, baby. That's crazy. I want to see that. I'm going to look it up. Uh, DJ Chalmers, uh, so this whole go get a number one rod receiver got really quiet. You think we still are... Uh, one still, or are we just getting one in the draft? I think you go to the draft. I don't think you go out and pay this price, man. I've never been a big fan of trading a ton of draft capital. I think it's foolish because I think you should build your team through the draft. I think that that's the main way you should build your team. I know there are teams that go out and execute in free agency, uh, but I like the draft aspect. I think long-term success is built through the draft, uh, getting that core foundational set of guys in. I think that that's exactly how you build a team that lasts through the ages, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get my drink. Man, guys, I am definitely getting a cold. <clears throat> it is like just deep down. Gross, bro. Gross. Definite lung butter. All right, guys, make sure you're hitting that like button as we roll through the show here. I appreciate it, and I won't keep hitting my microphone like a nut job. But anyway, we're going to keep going. Yeah, I think this number one receiver thing uh, is kind of crazy because George Pickens is the number one receiver on this football team. He's going to be uh, for a while. Uh, hopefully, we'll see how this all pans out, but he definitely proved that he can do it. Jason Ferguson, Patterson is a good pickup for returns. I agree. Yeah, do it in one, fo yeah, do it in one message, football legends. You can put it in there, but you just do it in one big one, okay? Uh, Craig Worlow. Uh, I think Juju was last to return and kick, uh, kick TD. Uh, boy, his career went downhill fast. Yeah, man, I, I can't remember even, did he really return or kick TD? I don't remember that. You, I'm going to have to look that up, Craig. Bring up a good one. He might have been. I don't know. Uh, Nick Hill, uh, do you think um, the, the Cordre a Cordrell signing is going to lead to the team trying to trade Najee and invest in more? I don't think so. I don't think it's that big of a signing like to where it would get Najee out the door this year or anything like that. Um, Najee is in the fourth year. Next year is his fifth year. That's where they have to extend the fifth year option. So I think no matter what, I don't think there will be any movement for this year. I just think he's going to add a layer to that running back room in the, in the special teams room too. Uh, him, I'm very horrible, sorry, uh, football legend. There was a Raiders player a couple years ago who tried to end uh, Ben Roethlisberger's career. I don't remember that either. That's kind of crazy. I know Ben used to get beat up, bro, definitely. John Creech, our division goes uh, Colts 1, Titans 2, Texans 3, and Jags last. I think the Texans are going to be probably the tops in your division, actually. C.J. Stroud is him, man. He is that good, and he's going to be the best quarterback in that division next year, in my opinion. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, he's going to be good, but I think C.J. Stroud is that dude, man. I think your division goes Ravens 1, Steelers 2, Bengals 3, Browns last, but it depends on the draft. Um, 
Yeah, maybe. I think this is probably your best year you've ever seen in 2024 for all the teams in the AFC North to make the playoffs. Uh, I know you hear that talk all the time and that it's like something that's never happened, but I think this year in 2024, I think that this is probably the best chance that has ever been for that to happen. Craig Werlow, uh, when Turkey Jones did that, the NFL was like WWE. Yeah, that was crazy. A WWE shit, man. <laughs> uh, suplex. <laughs> Power bombs. The, yeah, you ain't allowed to do that in today's world. Uh, beer malls, is that what they are saying, Creech? I thought uh, they put Steelers last. I don't know who's saying that. I think it was his report. Robert Road, uh, Bradshaw was uh, motionless on the field for an extended period of time and had to be carried off the field by Joe Green. Yeah, they didn't bring the carts out then, did they? <laughs> That's crazy. What's up, Jamie? Uh, I agree with the philosophy of drafting and developing players, although I like Khan's aggressiveness. Yeah, you got to have a good mix, man. Uh, but I think the majority, your foundation, that's where that got to come from, is come from the draft. Get them young guys. Get that young talent. All right, guys, as I said before, that's why I was a couple minutes late. I was looking at the recent additions to the mic drop mafia i didn't go back the whole way through but uh i wanted to read the names off of our recent additions of our uh mic drop mafia members for 99 cents a month uh mic drop mafia members get the badges emojis uh during the season they get an extra episode on wednesday that's exclusively to mic drop mafia members only um also uh we're working on different things like the raffles and giveaways. Well, giveaways, not raffles. So there's a giveaway coming up in April for the James Harrison photo, and then we'll do another one after that. We'll have another giveaway. So we've had Street Tacos, Wesley Boyd, Tom Ford, Three Kings Kennel, uh, Brian Kozier, Lindsey C., Jamie, J. Amy, uh, West Coast, um, West Coast Berg, Mark Malone, Stephen Carpenter, Charmingly uh, Sophisticated, Skyler, uh, Joseph uh, Donovan, uh, Justin Menneke, uh, Steeler Wade, Footsbig, CL, uh, Miss Pittsburgh, Robert Road, uh, and uh, that's it. I think that's it. And if I missed anybody, I apologize. But that's uh, the people that joined the Mic Drop Mafia, man. I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, Claude Bishop, Richard Seymour Raiders. Yeah, Richard Seymour, he was a uh, crazy dude. Yeah, that's who you're talking about, about uh, trying to break Ben's leg. But he was like violent, dude. He was nuts. Uh, I remember uh, playing at Heinz Field that time. Maybe that's where, where it got heated. They were arguing back and forth. Maybe that's the play you're talking about. Colin Smith. So my question is, are we playing uh, Patterson at wide receiver or running back because he can play both? I think you play him everywhere. I, I think you use his versatility everywhere. Mix him up. Uh, classify him as the running back. Classify him as a special team specialist. And uh, roll with him from there and allow him to play and fit wherever it may uh, be possible during um, the assembling of the game plan during the week. Insert him in special places and see how it works, man. Utilize his skills, Calvin Austin the third skills, players like that, and utilize their special skill sets. Uh, in the game plan, and I think Arthur Smith will do that. As I hit send, WWE, uh, for you young guys who didn't get to see old school football, watch the T. Jones sack on Bradshaw. It was the suplex WWE. Yeah, guys, dude, old school football definitely was a lot better. Even 10 years ago, it was a lot better. You could just actually hit somebody, and there wasn't all these freaking tackling rules. Uh, John Creech, uh, John, John Creech, uh, I think if Brock Bowers fell to us, uh, I'd love it, but I'd take uh, Cade Stouffer as the, as a Colts fan because uh, Mo Alley Cox is not it. Uh, what happened to Mo Alley, though, man? He was doing pretty damn good. He, he got a lot of attention. Uh, I thought that he, uh, he was becoming a good player. Uh, you know more about him than I do, uh, but I thought that, that, was, uh, that he was becoming pretty decent. Uh, Tizzy and the Queenie, can you be? No. All right, beer malls. Do we see Tomlin get an extension before the season begins? He's being uh, been speaking uh, lately in the media. I think guess what, Tomlin, your contract hinges on this season. No, I think he'll be signed to a two year extension. Uh, this before before summer hits, I think so, or during training camp, uh, or right before. I think it's just a matter of the next few months. You'll see an extension of Mike Tomlin. Uh, Craig Warlow, closest I can give uh, comparison to Turkey Jones was when Harrison slammed Cleveland fan that ran on the field and Harrison caught him. Wow. 
Wasn't that fun to watch, though? That was fun when James did that shit. He crushed that dude. Epic Expedition for the rest of you OG mic drop members. I see you. Yeah, man, no doubt. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. All you guys that are members. We, uh... The whole list is getting long, so we're not going to be able to read the whole list all the time. But uh, I'll try to always go through, and I'll look for the ones that are like the last seven days. So the last seven days, we'll give the shout out. So all you originals, you know who you are. Thank you so very much. Guys, we're missing our mayor tonight. Miss Pittsburgh, where's she at? I ain't seen her in the chat. Oh, she was in there earlier. Okay, I remember seeing her now. I was about to put a search party out for Miss Pittsburgh. I was about to see where she went. Uh, yes. Also, guys, make sure you go over to Sean. Click on his, uh, little icon there. His, uh, his, um, profile. Epic Expeditions. Get him up to 50 subscribers for me, please. Uh, it unlocks some features in the YouTube live, uh, portion. And, uh, he's going to be posting some cool, cool content soon. So make sure you go over there. Get subscribed to him. Be early in on that and, uh, help him out. Get to the 50 subscriber mark. Uh, that helps me out also. So please go over there and crank that uh, subscribe button for your boy, Sean. He'll be joining me tomorrow here at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live on Steel City Live. I hate how I say that, live, Steel City Live. I hate repeating words back-to-back -back kind of like deal like that. Uh, Craig, yes, John Creech. Uh, Odell might go back to the Rams. Uh, Odell is a diva. I don't know what I feel about him. I think he can do good, uh, but I, I just don't know how he fits in Pittsburgh, especially after you were Raven and he, I don't know. Well, we got Queen. He was a Raven too, but I think he was a born stealer. We'll see how that pans out. Uh, CL, why do we put so much money into defense when all the rules benefit the offense? Uh, I just think that's how it's played out. Uh, I think it always flips back and forth, CL, uh, because I, I, I think it is somewhat purposeful, but there's that, that factor of, hey, you get younger on one side, so you're not paying as much on that side, and then you start to get older, so those contracts become larger as you're trying to keep those players. And I think that happened a little bit for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I do think they put an emphasis on it, and I do agree with you. The The rules are totally geared toward the offensive side of the football, man. Uh, but is what it is right now. We'll have to just live with it. But definitely, that, that is a good question, man. Uh, definitely is. Uh, Nathaniel Sampson, do you think the Steelers should invest in a tight end in the second round? No, I don't. I mean, if there was some stud superstar there, I mean, I'm never against it. But uh, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are probably going to end up getting Zach Frazier in round two. Uh, they might end up trading back in round one, guys. Maybe there isn't a run on tackles like uh, last year. Maybe the center option that they want in Jackson Powers Johnson hasn't been picked yet. And uh, they're just waiting around. Maybe they trade back, get an extra second round pick or something. Uh, trade back to like 25, 26 and uh, try to scoop up a tackle there. Uh, there's many, many options for the Pittsburgh Steelers at 20. They can definitely do some uh, different things. There's my girl, Miss Pittsburgh. I see you. All right. Nathaniel Sampson, uh, do you think the Steelers, we did that um, for Miss Pittsburgh? Oh, yeah. There you go, Robert. Put them in there. Miss Pittsburgh likes them. Epic Expeditions. Yes, thank you. I'm learning how to edit videos. There you go. Go over and hit that uh, subscribe for your boy. Uh, Colin Smith, hoping Jackson Powers Johnson or J.C. Latham makes it to 20. I think you got a chance for J.C. Latham. and I, Jackson Powers Johnson, too, maybe, but there are so many center needy teams ahead of the Steelers that that's probably not likely. Hey, a new Mike Drop Mafia member to Big Stretch 357. Welcome, Mike Drop Mafia member, Big Stretch. We appreciate you, man. Thank you very much for joining. So another Mike Drop Mafia member in the books. Um, Colin Smith, Hoping Jackson, we did that one. Beer Miles Tomlin, if you get uh, a two-year extension and no playoff win, uh, that will push you to 10 years, then he's got to go. Yeah, I still think they extend him, and I do think you uh, are right, though, Beer Malls. He is on a short leash, in my opinion, uh, just because of the lack of playoff success being uh, since 2016. Uh, I don't think it goes on much longer before the Steelers grow truly impatient. Uh, Craig Worlow, uh, think the Steelers should go offensive line in the first two rounds. Don't have a good line. Won't go anywhere. Absolutely. You got to, um, we'll see how that goes. If there's a stud there, like <laughs> there's a couple players that, uh, 
I would push the offensive line to the back burner for a second to grab, you know, and uh, maybe try to trade back up and get the other offensive line player you need. I think there's options there, though. Young players on offense on rookie deals and cheap quarterback room. Yeah, that's a big part of the flop, too, Robert, no doubt. Unless you have uh, the early 2000 Ravens defense that does not win championship. That defense was sick, dude. Super sick. Uh, John. Uh, I think Josh Downs is a stud. Josh Downs. I don't know why I'm not, not ringing a bell. Yeah, welcome to the mafia. I like that. The most elite YouTube. Thank you, Nathaniel. I like that, man. Thank you. All right, guys, make sure you're hitting that like button as we're reaching almost 40 likes, man. That's pretty good. So uh, let's hit that up and hit that like button and get that moving. We'll go for a little bit longer here, and then I'm going to wrap this show up for our Tuesday show, but uh, we're inching toward the end. Uh, as Nathaniel said, the most elite YouTube channel. Amen, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> Beer malls, especially with these rules. High offense, finesse teams win in, uh, win in the late NFL playoff rounds. Uh, yeah, I miss the defensive days to where, uh, you know, tough, gritty defenses got you through the playoff run. Welcome to the mob. Hey, man, that's from Sean. Tyrone, what's up? If new running back, uh, you think trade airs to the Niners for uh, Braden? Brandon, uh, no, that Ayuk trade's over. Uh, I don't think Najee goes anywhere. This is year four. Uh, maybe in year five, uh, he's his fifth-year option. That comes due. Uh, but I think he stays this year, and I think they work on an extension with Najee. I don't think he would be enough for uh, a, a, of a trade piece for Brandon Ayuk anyway, just because I don't think Najee has that kind of value, uh, considering they have Christian McCaffrey already. Uh, football legend, uh, there were a lot of players back then uh, who absolutely hated Ben Roethlisberger. They hated him so much that they tried to end his whole career by trying to break his bones all the time. Remember, Mike? Uh, yeah, maybe Ben wasn't that liked. Robert Road, I think we all know Tomlin will get an extension and Artie Smith signed for a three-year. Yeah, that's where it gave us the big sign there. As you, as Robert pointed out there, guys, when uh, Arthur, Arthur Smith was signed to a three-year deal to be the offensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers, I would assume that you're going to have Mike Tomlin for three years. You know, that's just how that kind of works. Uh, you're going to give that marriage a little bit of a time to develop uh, in the kitchen here. Nathaniel says, uh, how would you feel about the Steelers trading down uh, to one of the top seven picks to get Joe Alt, maybe the first and next year's fourth and fifth? Uh, I think it's too much because I think you can still get a quality player uh, at 20, and I still think you could trade back from 20 uh, deeper into the draft in the 25-26 area and still get a quality player. I don't think you need to reach. I don't think a trade up into the higher portions of the draft, like the top 10, would be imperative this year to make a move for the Steelers, in my opinion. I think there's a deep draft class here. I think you can get a quality player all throughout the first round, and there's no sense in stretching too far out and uh, burning resources. John Creech, wide receiver two, Colts won two offensive rookie of the year. Uh, if seen, um, wide receiver two, Colts won two. What, I'm not sure what you were saying there, buddy. You can put it back in if you want. Tell me what you're talking about. All right, guys, we're going to start wrapping it up. So if there's anything else you guys want to say, make sure you get it in here in the next couple minutes. But uh, I'm going to wrap this show up, get everything uh, hemmed up for tomorrow. We're going to have a show or upload in the morning. Uh, it'll be out before probably like 930 at the very latest, 10 o'clock. I tried to been getting them out a little bit later. I've been trying to come down here at like 536 in the morning and filming. So uh, that's what we've been doing. Thank you, Sean. We'll look forward to talking with Sean tomorrow on uh, Steel City Live here on Mike Drop Sports. Uh, it'll be myself, Jason, and Sean. Uh, hey, that's pretty cool. The match, the likes and the uh, viewers match. Uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, but anyway, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I don't like to try to say the share and subscribe too much. I know that gets annoying. But uh, make sure you try to do that. And JD wants that offensive line squared away. I think it's imperative, man. Uh, Josh Jeffrey, do you think Fields is a good decision? Yeah, I think so, Josh. I think it'll be all right. They they got him for a handful of pocket lint and a stale bag of chips out of the vending machine uh, in, in the Chicago Bears Soldier Stadium. You know, so I think it's all right. Thank you, Miss Pittsburgh. 
Steel City Live, let's weld. Thank you, Steven. No doubt, let's weld, guys. Steel City Live, see you guys. All right, I got to wrap it up. Sorry, guys, my voice is hurting. I'm getting a cold. But we will be back. We will soldier on, as always, here on Mike Drop Sports. No doubt about it. Uh, in the show, Steel City Live will always go on, my friends. We will not miss a day. So tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Jason and Sean. Uh, we'll be on Steel City Live tomorrow then. And uh, don't forget, April 1st, we got Merrill Hodge coming up. Uh, that'll be cool. And uh, we're going to try to have some other fun surprises. I got some things in the works. So uh, we're going to get things cranking here on Mike Drop Sports. So until next time, guys, I'm Jason. This is Mike Drop Sports. This is show Steel City Live. Peace. See you guys.